this is going to be a little tutorial on how to create a vehicle using Chipmunk 2D. I haven't really practiced this, so I apologize if it's a little rough. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a cube for the ground. Uh, let's go and delete the physics component there. And we will add a Chipmunk box shape. And the default is uh, the size of the cube already, so all we just need to stretch that out, make it into our ground, and scoot it down a little bit. Give it a little bit of some tilt. And now we have some ground for our vehicle to fall onto. Uh, so first thing, uh, I guess we'll grab, I made a prefab for the wheel sprite already. Uh, nothing real fancy, but it's just a game object we're gonna put the, the chipmunk stuff onto and then just a quad with the sprite underneath that. Um, so first thing, let's go to the chipmunk menu and we'll add a circle shape. Now, one difference. Oh, yeah, editors clipping our stuff. One difference with the chipmunk uh, physics editors is um, you can actually edit the radiuses and you know offsets and stuff like that in the editor versus the the chip or the built-in Unity ones don't have visual editing for that sort of thing. So that that's kind of nice. Um, so we'll create a pair of wheels, duplicate that, move it over a bit. So now we got our two wheels. We save this and oh wait. Got a step. Also need to add a rigid body component, a chipmunk body. And we'll say the wheels have a mass of two. Alright, so now let's duplicate that again, and try it again. And we'll create another one just for fun. Um, so now when we press play, we have everything we need, just like the, the regular Unity stuff, and there we go, we have wheels at work. Uh, so let's grab the prefab for the chassis, drag that out here. Okay, so we're going to make this a rigid body as well. And we're going to throw on a polygon shape to that. Now again, uh, Unity by itself doesn't have... Why are my wheels... Let's move these to Z at zero. I just had a weird Z value. All right. Okay, so another difference, um, uh, when you're making like polygon shapes uh, or mesh colliders with Unity, I suppose, is the closest thing, you have to edit them in external program. You can't edit them within Unity's editor itself. Um, that'd be kind of silly for Chipmunk, so we have an editor that allows you to edit polygon shapes directly in Unity's editor. Uh, this gives you points you can drag around. Uh, you can click on any point that's new to add a point. And just selected ourselves there. So uh, there we go. So now that was an easy way to create the shape. Um, at any point when you, um, it only works for convex shapes. So any any time you you know bring a point inside the surface or whatever, it automatically reduces the number of points. Um, so that makes it really easy to work with convex polygons that way. So now we got the shape set up for it. Let's say the mass of the chassis is ten. Let's save that. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Let's see. And there we go. It falls on the wheels and rolls away. So we really don't want the chassis to collide with the wheels. And let's also set its friction to zero here. Um, but we don't want it to collide with the wheels. So let's use a collision group. Um, it's just a string. If the string matches between two different objects, it means those objects won't collide. So if I go to this wheel here and set its group to, to buggy, and also this one, now we have the wheels and the buggy won't collide. This is kind of handy. It's not something that Unity provides. So now you can see there the chassis slides away because it's frictionless and the wheels kind of rolled after it. Um, next up, we need to add some joints. So let's move these wheels to approximately where we want them, like there. And Let's see, like right there will be good. So one thing that's uh, handy to know, um, when you're looking at the, so you can see the, the way that's drawing the, the debug stuff for the, the wheel, uh, if you fold these up in Unity, uh, the, the component on the, the actual game object, it won't show the, the widgets for them anymore. So if you, if you want to hide them and get them out of the way so you can edit something else, that's, that's a handy way to get those out of your way for you. So now let's go to the buggy and we'll, we'll add some joints to that. 
Um, so for the front wheel, we're going to add a groove join. So what's happening here is we've got this, these two endpoints. Um, so let me set that one to the center there. Notifications coming up. Um, and we'll move the other point over here, let's say. So now this point that, that slides back and forth on there, this is going to be attached to the wheel or the other body. Um, as you can see, the, the, the groove joint is connected to the same body that the, the polygon shape is. So that's, that's the primary one, and that's the one that these, these two endpoints are attached to, and that's the groove. So then this other thing is a pivot that'll slide along the groove, and we want to set that to start there at the center of that wheel. So now, if we zoom out a bit, uh, oh, forgot to set the chassis, let's call this one rear wheel, and this one the front wheel. So we're going to go back to the chassis, and we want to connect the front wheel as the other body for the joint. And, you know, as you can see, like, it's pretty handy to be able to, like, see the joints you're editing. That's not something the built-in joint editors in Unity do. You just type in some numbers and hope they lined up correctly. So now when we run this, we'll see that the front wheel slides along with that groove. So it's kind of like a suspension that can push in or out. Now for the rear wheel, um, we want it to be kind of a swing arm type thing. Um, and Chipmunk has a pin joint, which is like, it's basically like a rod that connects two objects together. And you can't change the length of the rod, so we'll say it pivots between there. Oh, there we go. And the center of the wheel approximately. Okay, so. Then again, we have to go and set the rear wheel to be body B. Otherwise, uh, if you don't set that, set the other body, it just assumes you mean you want to connect it to you know the world, like the static body or whatever. So now when we run this, you'll see the car, the wheels stay attached. The rear one can swing upwards, and the front one kind of pivots in. So that works. Uh, now we just need to add some joints to it, or springs rather, to make the suspension work. So let's go to our chassis again here, and we got our two points. Um, so for suspension, I've always found that instead of making like a spring that has a certain length, it's actually easier just to have a zero length spring. And this isn't something that normally exists in real life, but since it's a computer, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's by the amount of distance it stretches that, you know, you don't need a real material that actually lines up with those properties. So basically it's always going to be pulling the wheel, the wheel center is one of these spots, and uh, to that spot on the chassis. So it's always going to pull the wheel back to the position it is in right now. So we'll leave it at a rest length of zero, so it's a zero length spring. Um, I've already kind of like figured out that about 300 seemed like a nice number for the, the stiffness and we'll give it some damping as well. You have to just have to, you know, guess and check these numbers. Uh, they, they do line up with real units if you really want to sit around and calculate them, but there's really not a good reason to do that. So there is our first spring. We'll connect that to the rear wheel. And we'll do it again for the front wheel. Another damp spring that goes from the center of that wheel to the same point on the chassis. Uh, rest length of zero, stiffness of 300, and damping of 20. Save that, zoom out a bit, and see how we did. Oh. So I screwed up there. I forgot to connect the spring to the wheel, and so it's the, the, the chassis was connected to the static, uh, the space instead. Uh, so I have to do front wheel as body B. There we go. Now this time it should work. And bounces along, the wheel stay stuck on. And there it goes. So that's um, how easy it can be to make a vehicle uh, using Chipmunk 2D. Um, it doesn't include like a motor, but um, basically to do that, you, you, there's you know a simple motor type for that. You can change the forces on it and, and everything. Um, and really it's just up to you to decide how you want the vehicle to feel when driving and how to change those forces. Um, but I guess that wraps uh, this, this up for now. Thanks for listening.